Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at St. Stephen Lutheran Church. You can find us on the web at stephenlc.org. There you can find our list of events and also the bulletin that you can follow along with and participate in worship. We have several folks to thank for making worship happen today. First, we have Lloyd as our lector, Tom is our assisting minister, Beth is our cantor, Abby is providing music, Jeanette has done our altar guild, Stacy wrote our prayers, Tom, Bill, and Wayne are our AV team, and Jen is our Zoom host. Thank you, one and all. As usual, please put any prayer requests that you have in the chat section. They will be sent to me at the appropriate time, and we will lift those up uh, at that time. And we'll be doing communion as we do every week. So you need a little bit of bread and either some wine or grape juice. And just a quick reminder that we have our, uh, we continue with our midweek Wednesday Lenten worship. It's at seven o'clock. It's the same link that you used for this morning. And it's also listed on the website. And so that it's easy, you can just click it and it'll take you right there. But it's seven o'clock on Wednesday and we invite you to uh, participate in that. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear our prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn, washing us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as hearers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. We'll continue with our opening hymn, which is Amazing Grace, and we'll be singing verses 1 through 3 as they're printed in the bulletin. Like 
the boundless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, and the light of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God. Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory. It's not a low-flying plane. That's our organ not cooperating this morning. We apologize for that. Let us pray. Oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light that all your deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue with our first reading. First lesson, a reading from the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. And then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent 
and set it on a pole and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life, thanks Praise be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. The second lesson is a reading from St. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, the second chapter. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your doing. It is the gift of God not the result of work, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, 
but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you're like our house, you get ads in the mail, plenty of them. You're probably also familiar with all the ads on TV and on the radio. And these days you get ads on most websites that you visit on the internet, as well as in your inbox, and maybe through texts and who knows what other ways. Ads try to catch our attention with something that sounds like a great deal. Who doesn't love a sale? Especially on something we either need or have been thinking about. Even better, when we hear about a sale for something we haven't even been considering, but all of a sudden, ooh, we kind of need that, don't we? Starts us getting thinking about whether we want or need the service or product. We can get excited about the possibilities. I just went through our pile of mail that we've thrown out over the last couple of weeks, and I found a variety of ads all selling us on so many different things. And, you know, we received the Val Pack. It's got all these wonderful little, little things in here, right? And it's loaded with all sorts of ads for you name it, everything. And maybe you get postcards. This one happens to be really big and I don't know exactly how they fit it in the mailbox. And then some of them look like newspapers, right? You're familiar with all those. But many of them have what is called the fine print. It's at the bottom of the page and it's printed with really small lettering. And, or, you know, at the end of a spoken ad, it's set at the speed that an auctioneer would be jealous of. It gives the details of the ad, the terms and conditions, essentially the fine print that lays out how the claims in the ad are not quite as good as they sound. There are often restrictions. Some of my favorite ones, see if I can even read them here. Uh, advertised price requires credit qualification. That's always a good one. You've got uh, minimum monthly payments. Oh, certain locations. Uh, exclusive, you say there's certain products that you can't buy. It's, it's not valid with any other offers. Let's see what else. Additional charges may apply. Offer available not in all areas. You gotta purchase so many different things. And this, this offer is for new and qualified former customers only. Important terms and conditions apply. None of this is shocking to us. In fact, it's quite common. We hear or read an ad and we're already thinking about the terms and conditions, what the exclusions are. We have an eternal hope that somehow we're gonna make out really good with a sale, forgetting that ads are just a way for a company to get you to part with your money for whatever service or product they have. In and of itself, this isn't a bad thing. It's how business works and operates. There's nothing wrong with trying to get someone to buy something that's being sold. And in most cases, what companies are selling or providing is actually quite helpful to our lives. They make our lives more enjoyable, efficient, healthier, or help us to do something. And that's a great thing. But those terms and conditions, there's a reason why they're in really small print or said really, really fast they diminish what's being offered. After we hear or read them, our enthusiasm for the service or product is often 
cut down a bit, sometimes quite a lot. When we hear the terms and restrictions, the exceptions, qualifications, we start to see that what's being offered is just not so great. Imagine if God worked this way. Go back to Moses and the Israelites. The people have a problem. They're getting bitten by poisonous snakes after complaining, and some of them are dying. They recognize that they have sinned against God and Moses and are looking for a way out. Imagine if God used the same logic as some of our ads that we have seen. Got a problem with the poisonous snake? We've got your answer. And God goes on to tell Moses to make the poisonous serpent and put it on a pole and present it to the people. God thinks, hmm, I've got something really great here. So I'm going to offer healing for anyone who's been bitten, but it's going to come with a price and some conditions. I'll just put it in the fine print. And so Moses goes out and says, hey, you want to heal from that snake bike? Sign here on the dotted line. Some conditions apply, but don't worry about that. You need this product. And the terms and conditions at the bottom of the page say something like this. You'll need to sign up for an annual contract, which includes sacrifice requirements. And this is really only a valid offer in the wilderness. It's only for new snake bites and only for the poisonous snakes that were sent. Other snake bites need not apply. Payment by shekel can be made in advance with approved credit. Great deal, huh? Or reimagine John 3 with the same kind of terms and conditions. I've got it right here. John 3, 16. See, and this is the special edition here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Oh my gosh, there's an asterisk. Huh, it's really small. Let me see what the fine print says at the bottom here. Terms and conditions. Some restrictions apply. Valid only in creation. God loving the world, not applicable to your enemies or those people that you don't like. Anyone your nation is at war with or has hostility with. People of other religions, sexual orientations, or opposing viewpoints. See God for details. Such terms and conditions really just kill the good news in either case, doesn't it? Makes it less special. A whole lot less good news. It's no longer proclamation of salvation, which is incredible. It just turns into more of what we've come to expect in the world. Something that sounds too good to be true on the surface, and the fine print shows what is offered is really not all that great. And that's not how faith works. It's not how God works. There's no asterisk in Scripture. For God so loved the world doesn't come with an exception clause. It doesn't come with qualifications. It doesn't include extra fees, no fine print. And the only terms and conditions that apply are that Jesus has done all the heavy lifting for us. He's taken care of the terms and conditions. He's ripped up the fine print and offered up something incredible, and he delivers every time. But this can be really upsetting for people when they really grasp what is being said. Because we're used to terms and conditions, to the fine print, that we aren't sure what to do when we really grasp that the fine print doesn't apply to Jesus and to faith. Some folks really struggle with this. This is a challenge. It's the challenge of the message of grace with grace, there is no paying for it. There's no earning it. There's nothing that we can do to deserve it. Nothing. We so desperately want Jesus to work the same way everything else does. I pay and then I receive a transaction. When grace is proclaimed, our natural inclination is to put an asterisk beside it and create terms and conditions. 
It's just too good of news. There has to be some kind of restrictions and qualifications. We have to make it something less than what it is because what we are hit with in every other area of our lives, but that's not how Jesus works. Jesus offers us something incredible with no hook, no certain conditions apply, no monthly contracts, no exclusion of salvation services, no specific locations, everyone's credit is good enough. The good news is that this is, is that Jesus isn't like the world and what the world offers. And the kingdom doesn't operate like the world does either. Jesus loves us, and it's a love that doesn't make sense. It's a love that is completely vulnerable. It's a love that goes beyond what we are capable of offering. And we may even have trouble receiving and accepting it because it's something that we don't receive from the world and we aren't used to it. It's a love that breaks through barriers and is willing to go to great lengths for us all the way to the point of death and beyond to risk being rejected and still to love us anyway. If God truly, truly, truly loves the world in that kind of vulnerable way, think about what that means. That means that God loves you and me without exception. Even when we do things that push God away, it means that God loves all people, even the ones that do terrible things. God's, God loves our enemies as much as God loves us. That can be a tough pill to swallow because it's unfair. God's love, though, is very unfair. And that's a good thing, a great thing. That's what makes it good news. Because if it was fair, we wouldn't receive it either. We don't deserve it. Lent is a time in which we intentionally examine our relationship with Jesus. When we look at the times that we try to put ourselves in the place of Jesus, when we try to dictate to Jesus what he can and cannot do, what he has a say in and what he must be stay out of our lives in, who God loves and who God should hate. We aren't God, but we are loved by God. For God so loved the world doesn't have an asterisk, no terms and conditions, no qualifiers, no fine print, no for a limited time either. Only an incredible offer of salvation and love for everyone. And you can bank on that. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of the day, which is God Love the World. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4 as they're printed in the bulletin.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God, our parent, you have loved us steadfastly for generations. You have seen your church grow, become distracted, wage war, spread your word, and do that which grieves you. You see our impatience on the journey. Grant us a quiet heart to hear your will. Give us courage to act on your behalf and to hold each other and our faith institutions accountable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Creator, as spring returns, we are reminded of the glory and the miracle of this earth. Your majesty shines in every direction. Thank you for blessing us with a word that sustains us in so many ways. We sometimes forget what an honor and responsibility it is to care for your creation. As we enjoy the warmer weather, as the sun and rain bring forth all kinds of greenery, help us to make choices that support this word, world and do not hurt it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior Jesus, the darkness of the world can be overwhelming, especially during these challenging times. When others react in anger, help us to respond with love. Make us instruments of peace and justice in the world, desperate for your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, your people cry out to you in their trouble. Deliver them from poverty and oppression and all that binds them. Change their tears to shouts of joy Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, be with all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, as you have done so many times before. Have mercy on them and wrap them in your loving arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of St. Stephen, thank you for your presence in our congregation. You have guided us for over 250 years. Continue to walk among us now as we seek to serve you and to love one another in this time and place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for Kent as he undergoes tests tomorrow. Prayer, <clears throat> continue prayers for Carl Jamerick as for his upcoming open heart surgery on March 24th. Prayers of healing for Chick Dennison, who has had a stroke, and for Sharon Lamp as she deals with ongoing medical issues. Prayers for Maya as her body attempts to reabsorb the many blood clots throughout her body, relief from the anxiety arising from fear that one will break loose. Prayer for those currently seeking employment and those struggling with decisions about vocation. Prayers for Tom's brother, Bill, as he continues to recover from a bone marrow transplant and is improving. Prayers for all those affected by COVID, those recovering and those grieving the deaths of family and friends. Prayers for Jerry Dennison as she copes with Chick's latest health issue. And we're gonna take a moment of some silence to mark the one year anniversary of the COVID worldwide pandemic as we have lost over 535, 533,000 Americans 
and 2.6 million people worldwide. Let us take a moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us show a sign of that peace. And as we're uh, setting the table, the instructions for the offering are in the bulletin, several different ways to make your offering. And as I like to do, um, I like to highlight a, a ministry. And it seems only appropriate today that we would highlight our connection to the larger church. As we heard in uh, our gospel reading, for God so loved the world. And our congregation is not just an island unto itself. We are connected to the larger church in lots of different ways. Specifically, we're connected to the larger church through our synod, the lower, lower Susquehanna Synod, and also the ELCA, the national denomination. And we support the activities that these different expressions of the church do because we know that we cannot do everything ourselves, that we are stronger together. Synod means walking together, and that's what we do. In our synod, there are about 230 congregations in about eight counties. And I will tell you to give you some sense of this, it's the third most compact synod in the country, the third largest in terms of number of congregations in eight counties. To give you a sense of this, there is something called the Central States Synod, which composes two full states and a bit of another one in the middle of the country, and Iowa and those areas and they have half as number of congregations. So just to give you a sense, our church varies all over the place. And our support of our synod, our mission support of our synod, helps us to work with other congregations. It helps us when there is a disaster. We have actually received in the past grant money to help us with disaster relief of people who suffered from COVID. Where does that money come from? It comes from congregations across the synod. And so we do things to help support our synod as well. We benefit from the synod and we give back to the synod. The same thing with the churchwide organization as well, which allows us to work with congregations across the entire country. So we thank you for your ongoing support, not just for the ministry that we do, but that we do in partnership with churches across our synod and across our country. And I invite you to set your table with a little bit of bread and either some wine or grape juice. Just need a little bit and anything that is not consumed during the meal can either be consumed immediately afterwards or it can be returned back to the ground. Please don't dump anything into the garbage or into the trash. That's not an appropriate way to dispose of extra items from the meal. They can be returned outside to the ground if you have anything left over. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven, accompanying us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Sa Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for the creating of the heavens of the earth and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. I invite you to lift your element of bread. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, I invite you to lift up your cup with wine or grape juice. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all the drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come and be fed. consume the elements.
Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table, you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You are what God has made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. We'll close with our sending hymn, which is Christ, the life of all the living, verses one through three, as they're printed in the bulletin. Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain and everywhere. Thanks be to God. We will. <laughs>